Hi, this is John Marsh from The Beloved, and you're listening to Dynamic. The Beloved have hit our shores once again to play some major gigs around the country and promote their brand new album, X. We have the creative force behind The Beloved, namely John and Helena Marsh, live. First, welcome John. How are you, John? Okay, thanks. I would think that Helena would be in Sydney somewhere checking out the clothes we're at the moment. Uh, I don't know about the clothes. Checking out the uh, sunshine, I think, is probably... It's quite a nice day out there, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, it is. I don't know. I haven't been out there to see much of it, but um, I do believe that the sun is shining. Yeah. So you're the one that gets stuck indoors to do all the interviews, right? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, I suppose you can get those um, conference calls, but effectively, you know, telephone interviews, it tends to be a uh, short straw thing. Otherwise, she ran away faster than <laughs> I did, I think. That was how it went. She thought ahead, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Plan ahead code. <laughs> the Beloved have never been really a clearly defined organisation, have they? I mean, uh, not necessarily club music, yet always with a dance element. How would you describe your music? Uh, yeah, with great difficulty, probably like everybody else. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, you, d you don't sort of sit down and, and make it to try and fit snugly into a certain category. Um, and I guess the fact that it, you know, with it, with each album, there's always been an element of it which, um, you know, we've had sort of hit singles and what have you from each record that mm. that it's it still has a, you know a commercial slant to it. So it's it's within the very broad church that is pop music. It it's part and parcel of that. But the, you know, dance pop is such a terrible, terrible phrase. Yeah. Um, Modern electronic pop music is maybe a good way of describing it. Well, pop music as such has definitely changed over the last 10 years. How has your sound changed, say, from the early days of The Beloved in the late 80s to the uh, sound of the new album? Well, I mean, I'd like, you know, I suppose like most people, in fact, you'd like to think that you're getting, I don't know, better. To, again, it's a very emotive thing, you know. I mean, you have to think that you're, you're developing and evolving all the time. Otherwise, you'd feel that the whole thing was just sort of treading water. But... Um, you know, I just, e each time you make another record, it's a challenge to see if you can avoid just going over territory you've already covered. You know, it has to be fresh for us. Mm. Um, you know, you can't sort of just formularize it and make another one like the one you did before because it's just not exciting enough. There's certainly never that element of going back in the studio to make another hello, for instance. Um, no, although, you see, the thing is there's probably lots of people at the time who wanted us to go and do just, just that. I don't yeah. mean like necessarily our audience. I mean, that, that may be or may not be, but, um, you know, with the last album, Sweet Harmony was a huge hit record all over Europe. Um, and there was a sort of, you know, um, body of thought coming from the record company that would have sort of wanted us to go and make another couple of records exactly like that one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we just haven't got the stomach to sort of sit there and just churn it out you know there's lots of bands who do that and every, you know good luck to them and everyone knows who they are but really for us it's, it's sort of it's got to be an adventure with right? many english groups deciding to remix and re-release old material all the time may we see the resurfacing of old beloved tracks for um, the remix pile possibly i mean you know we made there was a remix album of happiness called bliss mm. now which came out with the conscience album we had a whole stack of mixes and things ready to go but we'd spent so much time chasing, you know, the success of Sweet Harmony around Europe that it got sort of too far away from the initial release of the record to, to warrant putting it out. You know, we'd already begun to think ahead and think about making the next record and we didn't really want to commit the time to it. Mm. Um, whereas off this album, we've already, you know, had, we've either done ourselves or had other people do a stack of really, really cool mixes of over half the tracks already. So, you know, it's, it's effectively it exists, that album exists, and if we put two or three of the tracks from the last one in as well, you know, there's a pretty strong, uh, completely house um, variation on what we do. So, you know, I think, I think, you know, apart from anything else, it's not an ego thing, I think, you know, everything you ever do is obviously worth releasing, but at the same time, um, lots of these things only ever turn up on maybe 12 inch singles, and, you know, I, you know, I know, you know, the likelihood of them turning up over here is not as great. You know, CD singles and things may turn up in other parts of the world, but not, not that not much vinyl mm -hmm. goes out. Um, How important is it with, say, the, the, the first single, Satellite? It's a very up-tempo dance, sort of clubby single. How important is it to have it remixed and uh, done in all sorts of different versions? Um, well, it's, it's important to us, really, that we, 
get that opportunity to express, you know, other facets of it. I mean, most of the mixes of satellite uh, we did ourselves, but the ones that were done by other people were people that we specifically chose. You know, we went over to New York last Christmas just to find these two, these two people who'd made records that we really liked very obscure people and get them to do mixes and you know we luckily managed to track them down and was that uh, height six yeah height 611 you know i yeah. mean they're like really really unknown basically mm. um but you know we found how to get hold of them and went and gave them a dat with the bits on it just said you know would you do some mix and and they gave it a different a completely different flavor but um you know to us it, it's as valid uh, as what we do you know i mean it may not be to everybody's taste but it, if we're sort of responsible for the remixes then I feel it's an extension of our own personality. I want to actually clear something up here. I mean, um, you go under different names, don't you? Yeah. Remix wise. I mean, who, who is there? There's Adam and Eve? Um, over the years there's been Adam and Eve yeah. and um, we did, some, oh god I can't remember, we did some on the last album as a different name but it's it was the it, three sisters or something like that? Or oh something that, yeah, that was going back, there was Little Sisters which was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Um, um, generally now we just do them as, as ourselves. I mean, you know, if we're putting out, if we're doing mixes for other people, we just, you know, credit it as beloved remix because it's, again, you know, I, I want people to be able to see that, you know, we're giving it um, as much import. You know, we generally give someone else's track as much importance in the studio as we do our own. It's still to your benefit to make the best possible record you can. Let's give Satellite a play, shall we? This is the, obviously the first single off X. Um, yeah, indeed. This, uh, so I've been told, is Satellite by the Beloved and uh, partial though I am, I, I quite like this record. What is one of your favourite periods or even tracks from the last ten years? Um, I think Forever Dancing probably from that early period, just because it, it, it was the line in the sand really, it was the point at which it became obvious that we could change the way we sounded mm. and make something new happen. Um, you know, it, it, the net result was to basically have to sack the rhythm sections that we had, but, um, you know, really without doing that at that point in time, the group would have just, you know, gone up, up a complete cul-de-sac and, and died a miserable death. Well, before 87, you were, were definitely more rock orientated, weren't you, with the exception of Forever Dancing? Yeah, but I think, you see, you know, without, in, in no way undermining what we did, we it sounded that way because you're trying to please everybody in the band. You're a four-piece group with a drummer and a bass player, and you feel that you have to incorporate them all in every track you ever do, um, you know, and the desire to want to make music sound different is completely hampered by the fact that your lineup doesn't allow you to do that. You know, it was writing songs that that, just, that needed to be recorded in a different style, but we never used them for the band because, because people couldn't play them. And I guess then the influence from you going out and as such when the, when the club scene started around that time as well helped change the attitude of the band? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it all coincided. It really was just like incredibly good timing in a lot of ways. You know, we split in half in sort of autumn 87. I went to New York for three weeks, sort of got exposed to stacks of different music. The house scene was beginning to just bubble underground in London and it was just, you know, fantastically good time to be to be sort of so open-minded, you know, I mean, I didn't really have a blueprint of how we wanted to sound. All you know is that you want to change it, make it more dynamic, certainly give it some kind of rhythmic impetus that it didn't have before. And, you know, then you're surrounded all of a sudden by this fantastic new music coming through. That my all-time favourite pop song. Right. Any memories about writing that one? Um, not really. Other than that, it was kind of a 
you know, I suppose it's fairly obvious that it's some sort of cathartic end of a relationship kind of song. Um, and, you know, it's one of those songs that seems to people, a lot of people pick that as one of their favourite tracks. I mean, the irony being that it, it failed dismally when it was released as a single. So, you know, it, it, it's quite one of those tracks that over a period of time has stood the test of time so you know I'm quite proud of it as a song I suppose. And we're back with the beloved and John Marsh live on the line. Now on to the live gigs. What have you got planned for the Sydney shows especially this Saturday night at the Metro John? Um, that's a good question as well. I, I, I'm sort of, well, we, we supplied a lot of, of additional visual material um, to the promoters over here because the guy that, that did all the, the, the lights at the last stuff we did over here was like really excellent. So we've given him a lot of unreleased video footage to um, basically base the whole visual concept of the night on. And then that allows us to just get on with doing our thing. Have you heard much of the Australian support acts, uh, Boxcar and Our House? Um, yeah, well, Our House played with us in Melbourne and Brisbane last week. Mm. Um, uh, Boxcar, no, I haven't. Although somebody said that you know they're, they're not a million miles away from from what we do, but I mean, no. um, so that'll be quite interesting to, to hear what they sound like. Um, well, Boxcar have actually moved over to England. Yeah, and, and apparently uh, this is their last gig or something over here like before it. they go. So. But Our House, yeah, they, they've also been signed to Perfecto, which is part of East West as well. So. On a whole, how do you feel about the new album X? Are you um, totally satisfied with it? I mean, you've got the finished product now, you're seeing it go into the charts, you've got singles coming off it. Would you change anything? Uh, no, actually, not at all. I mean, I think in, in terms of being the most realised album that we've made today, you know, from how you wanted it to sound to how it ends up sounding, it's certainly the strongest from that point of view um, and in terms of changing it well if we want to change it we just go in and re remix it <laughs> yeah. remix the bloody tracks you know it's like you can't get too hung up on it once it's done you, you know you've you've only released it because you think it's finished you know you could get heavily analytical and say well you could change this bit that bit but I mean you know it, it, if the songs aren't any good then it re you could remix it till the cows come home it won't change anything so before I leave you, John, um, I just wanted to ask about the artwork on the album because it's quite uh, innovative. It's sort of the morphing of both of your faces yeah. together. Uh, what was the idea be behind that? Who came up with that one? It's cheaper than raising a child, you know. It just sprung out from this conversation with somebody who convinced, you know, was convinced that we looked really similar to each other and we, for obvious reasons, didn't particularly agree with this. But then somebody took to completely, you know, random photos and stuck them together in the computer and, and it was really quite, you know, weird seeing the way they just fitted at random. So, you know, for the sleeve, we tried to make it that, you know, through changing hair colour and makeup and what, what, you know, we bleached our eyebrows and this kind of weird shit to get the, the photos done so that we looked quite similar. And then when you lay one on top of the other in the computer and, and start blurring it around, then it just becomes this kind of... You know, to me, it looks like a, a sort of fairly asexual child of about 12 or something. It does, like that, yeah. You know, which, I mean, the androgyny of it is what I really like. You know, it's almost alien. And on the sleeve of these, the pressure where we sort of stretched it and put it into negative, it just looks like some weird alien. Mm. You know, the um, the Roswell incident or something like that. You know, it's kind of scary, though, to think that it maybe is. you're sexually attracted to somebody who looks like you. I'm not sure that's a very healthy state of affairs. I wanted to do a bit of a retrospective later on and play some of the old ones, right. like um, probably go back to If Only and stuff. Wow, that is back. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've picked up um, Forever Dancing on 12 inch yeah, and, and Where It Is as well. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, CD or vinyl? No, vinyl. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's rare. And uh, That Loving Feeling, got that. Right. And um, what was the, one? Uh, the Magic Wand mix of uh, Sex Mix of Your Love Takes Me Higher. Bloody hell. That's a really, that's a pretty eclectic collection actually, that's pretty mad. Flip side of loving feelings really funny. That's it, love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Silly, but um, we were so sort of didn't really know how to go about making that kind of record. Uh, 
Yeah. Like, it's right in the middle of the house. Yeah, house yeah, wasn't quite it? Tense, yeah. Though, uh, bit scary, really. Well, it's better than the other side. The other side was we had a producer foisted on us by, you know, I'm not going to keep blaming the record company, but when you just get signed, you're a bit sort of naive about the whole process. Mm. They stuck us in with a sort of very mainstream producer and, and it kind of. Is that Duffy? It, yeah, you know, he's a nice enough guy, but it erased really all our personality from the recording. Mm. You know, uh, it just doesn't feel like our record. It's the only record we've ever released that, in, in retrospect, I, I really just can't get excited about. <laughs> Everything else you listen back to, you don't, you know, you don't necessarily like it so much anymore, but you understand entirely where your head was at when you made it, um, except that track. You can catch The Beloved Live this Saturday night at the Metro in Sydney. Check out their new album, X. It's available now. And, uh, John, you might like to introduce the latest offering from the album. Um, OK, here we go. Um, this is Ease the Pressure, which should be um, available um, to put on your stereogram as I speak. Oh 